What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Bolero. Sam here with Gab and Maui. And surprise, surprise, we're doing another back-to-back episode. Actually, we just finished yung Power Rankings, Power Rankings episode namin. And then we decided, hey, why not record another one just for the fun of it? So we're back here <laughs> doing another episode. And this time, Gab, Maui, I think what we're talking about are the most interesting storylines for the remainder of the off season. So for the remainder of the off season yung pag-uusapan natin. Ano yung mga dapat natin panoorin or bantayan na mga storylines for this off season. Let's start with you Maui. Um start yeah. us off. What's the most interesting storyline for you? Ako one of the most interesting eh, eh, kasi di ba, we just did our power rankings. Uh we're talking about a UST team. Uh I think what's most interesting to me during the offseason is to see if the CUSD team is for real, right? Because we saw them have two very competitive games against uh, La Salle and UP, and then again, another competitive game against NU where Nick Cabanero hit that game-winning shot na Kyrie Irving S, the yung, yung game winner. Uh, I think the main question right now is, are they for real? Right? I rank them very high on the power rankings. We'll know soon if they are for real, this team is for real, right? We have to to get... Uh, uh, UST is a team that has played sparingly, right? On live TV, on live uh, streaming, right? This, this off-season. We haven't seen really a ton of them, but but during this field oil, they have decided to play all the games. So it's a, a, it's a storyline that I'm looking out for. Uh, we know that UST is a dominant basketball program when it comes to UAP. That hasn't been the case the past few seasons. Uh, Yung volleyball team nila just I think won yung 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 UAP volleyball yung women's volleyball nila just won yung 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 volleyball clip and you can see how how crazy and how powered empowered the crowd was it's something that natalo I sila to. Nat- natalo talo sila do natalo sila so runner up sila natalo nyo pare sorry sorry they're uh, running up they're, they're running up but they made it to the place, finals place, I, I, yeah. I I'm mistaken they made it they to beat the finals. Lasal. They beat Lasal. They beat yeah. Lasal. They beat Lasal. Uh, they made it to the finals. Uh, and you guys, uh, my, my, my point is really y- yung crowd ng UST is something to look forward to. If they have a competitive basketball team, it will be electric uh, come season 87. Uh, so it's one of the storylines I'm looking forward to. Same with FEU. They have to bounce back one way or another, one time. One time. Uh, what are your thoughts? Ako rin, para sa akin, Maui, very interesting uh, UST. If you watched our Power Rankings episode, and make sure to watch that, all three of us had UST in, di- on, in, yung in different spots. Different you know, rankings. Oh, nga. Tama. Uh, I won't spoil it, but you know, very different. Uh, let, yung, let's just say, yung nabudol lang konti si Mr. Santos sa si Mr. Yap na sa UST Growling Tigers. <laughs> Ako yung medyo... Nag-temper na expectations. Ayoko lang ma- yung mabudol ulit sa UST. But yeah, ako rin, I do want to see UST play more games. I do want to see their full lineup. I hope Zizane Mahmood can finally come. I hope if Chase Lane is gonna play, I hope he he plays already. Um, if they have any other recruits incoming, I, I, I want to see them play their full lineup. Because you can see on the perimeter, you perimeter or oriented, you can see that they're pretty solid already. They have a lot of playmakers. You know, we said in the UST, it's not just the Micabanero show and slash backed up by the Christian Christian Manaytay so show anymore for UST. They're now they now have a ton of weapons who can score and create plays for themselves and each other. So I want to see if that's if they can consistently get good games. Because honestly, your game against NU, uh, they had lost that game. <laughs> For some reason, they, they, yung, they got out of it. So I think medyo maghihinayang tayo if USD had not won the game against NU. Diba? Medyo mag-iba yung tingin natin sa kanila. Napan, Huy, they beat NU, buzzer beater. We're on that hype train, that USD hype train. But, but if they had lost, if the shot by Nick Cabanier did, did not go in, I think Metro Iba yung tigan natin. So I want to see how they perform in the next couple of games. Uh, they're going up, I think, against Ateneo tomorrow. So uh, I'll be ex- excited to, to watch that. The Fort Street Patigao revenge game. Revenge game, if you want to call it that. Um, and just want to see how they show up. Uh, will, 
will will UST play to the same level as Ateneo? Will Ateneo beat UST? Then, then we can look different at UST. Is that simply uh, three games of playing well versus consistently showing the same level of basketball that they yung, yung that they showed against Lasalle, UP, and NU? Sami. Yeah, I I agree. UST is the most intrig- one of the most intriguing teams. So the storyline behind them is something that is to look out for. Um, siguro the one thing that I want to add there, and this applies to all the teams, is as part of like the storyline is when do we get to see the complete lineup? So for UST, we're still waiting for Zayn Mahmood, diba? who was one of the biggest recruits of UST. Um, I don't honestly, I don't know when he's going to be coming over to the team, but. That's also another wrinkle to the excitement or the hype of uh, watching this UST team is getting to see all of the recruits. Sorry, si Chase Lane din Paula, we haven't seen or heard from. So, yun din yung medyo inaabangan mo pa eh, the other key recruits of UST. Um, let's move on to the next storyline. Gab. Well, allow me to be a bit of a homer and... Uh... Just mourn or shout out my Ateneo Blue Eagles because they have been bad. And if you watched our power rankings, you know what we think of the Ateneo Blue Eagles. And <laughs> there's no sugarcoating it. They have been bad. And they have not played together at all, except for one game against Lasalle where they were destroyed. So... Yeah, I just want to see them. I I want to see Ateneo play together. I want to see Jared Bahai play more games with Mason Amos. I I want to see the the full rotation that's gonna play for season eighty seven because we haven't watched it. It's been a different cast each and every game. Um, I want to see uh if the shooting will if they can add more shooting if they can shoot more consistently if Chris Kuhn can score more consistently I want to see Mason finally have a breakout game he hasn't had one we kind of expect him to be one of the guys to carry the offense so I do hope we see that I want to see Balogun I I, 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 I want to see Kobe Devasana if he's recovered already from his uh, sickness last injury I I want to see him play uh I just want to see a whole Ateneo roster play. I mean, as an Ateneo fan, I think for our Ateneo uh, viewers out there, fans out there, you'd want to see the team. You want to see the full team that was promised. And so far, we have not gotten it. We've lost five games uh, straight in the preseason again. And I, I, I want to see some chemistry. I, I want to see, I want to hope as an Ateneo fan, I want to hope. Because right now, hope <laughs> hope is so minimal for us Ateneo fans. For, for us Ateneans right now, it's the hope is, is dwindling down for season 87 for a chance to compete. You know, final four man lang, there's a chance to compete for the final four. The hope is not there right now. Huh? So, yeah, I... I I want to be excited. You must like si UST. Yung gusto ko ma-hype up man lang ng konti. Coach Tab, Ateneo, Ateneo Blue Eagles, please. Just allow me to hope for a little bit. Just give me that hype. A little bit of a hype. That yung talaga to see uh, the the fruition of all the recruiting and of, and of all the training that's been happen, yung that's been happening since the end of season 86. Sana man lang makita natin. Because uh, we saw a, a Bahay and Amos combination in Batangilas. We saw how productive it can be. And if if they are going to live up to their potential, it has to start now. It can't be the start of season 87 lang natin makakita yung, yung uh, Jared Bahay, Mason Amos co- yung combination. It can't be na start of season 87 pa lang natin makakita si Balogo and actually get a bulk of minutes. Diba? We have to see it now. We have... Ateneans can't just always point to excuses when 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 Ateneo lost. They have to see a product of something. So that's the most it, one 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 of the most interesting storylines for me. Uh, maybe it's a little bit of recency bias that I just saw Ateneo play and lose against Adamson in the last minute, last few seconds of that uh, game last Friday. But yeah, that's it for me. Ah. Uh, Give me a chance to hope. Hope lang. Hope lang. Okay, konti. Yeah. Sami, uh, 
yeah, I think I think God said it most uh, when it comes to Ateneo. I, I have to agree. Uh, and I just say, Tama si Gab, give us some hope uh, to the Ateneo community. <laughs> give the Ateneo community uh, a chance to hope uh, this offseason. Hopefully they get healthy. Hopefully we see a, a more intact lineup within the next few days. Uh, but Sammy also mentioned during our previous episode that it might not be might not be the case because they're playing a ton of games in a short span of time. So maybe we don't get that chance. But hopefully we do. Uh, that's something to look forward to. Definitely, uh, Ateneo has to show some promise. Uh, has to show some uh, potential for for next off season or maybe so that all the excuses also can end. Diba? Maybe we just have to accept the fact or maybe there's some glimmer of hope. So that's something to look forward to for me, Sam. And just to add, uh, although mm-hmm. Athenians can be supportive of the Blue Eagles, they can also turn on on you. I think uh, maraming Maui, toxic uh, fans na, sa Ateneo. Tama yan. Maraming toxic fans ang mga Ateneo. And Athenians have very high standards just because we've won for so long already. The moment that we start losing, you will see a lot of... Uh, um, how do I say this? Uh disagreements come irrational diba? people <laughs> yes a lot of irrational people come uh-huh. and they will say a lot of bad things you, you know how Tama. Athenians Totoo can be alam natin lahat yan so crucial yung glimmer of hope eh. yung that little bit of hope mm. that you give the Ateneo fans na uy ch- nanalo tayo ng three state game ba- baka may chance tayo you know crucial yun eh because as soon as they feel down, they will get down on your team. Parang yung, uh, I don't want to make a little bit of a comparison, but like the the Knicks in the NBA, diba? as soon as you start playing well, they will back you up, they will cheer you as hard as they could. But if you start playing badly, oh my God, they will turn on you. And Athenians do have that kind of uh, attitude, that you, I'm just saying. Sammy, go ahead. Yeah, just to add to the interesting storylines related to Ateneo, I guess people still want to see more of Jared Bahay. How how good is Jared Bahay against uh, UAAP seniors competition? Um, and then for Ateneo, something we've been talking about, can we figure out our big man problem? Um, Udodo hasn't been playing a lot. Um, actually, a lot of the bigs haven't been playing a lot, even Mason Amos. So hopefully, as you guys mentioned, we get to see more of them. The upcoming days, they're going to play a ton of games. So... We'll, we'll see, we'll see. Um, moving on to the next storyline, I think I'm going to go from one of the uh, worst teams or bottom teams so far in the preseason to the top teams. Uh, we know Lasal has lost to UP, UP already, but is there a team that can beat UP or Lasal? Uh, we've, again, I don't want to spoil the, I don't want to spoil the power rankings, but we all agreed UP and Lasal are in a separate tier on their own. But is there a team that can sort of um, figure out a way to beat these two teams and so make make this upcoming season 87 more interesting? Because I think everyone, if you ask any UAAP fan right now who's going to make it to the finals or who's going to win the championship, it's UPN Lasal. It's really those top two th- teams. But big question now, is there a team that can beat those two teams? And... We'll get to see the other teams play more. Um, hopefully, they'll be more complete now, and I think that's something that we should look out for. But lalo na UP, I think they haven't been, they haven't lost a single game in the preseason. Anything you you guys want to add? Yeah, uh, ako, I, I would say the same. Uh, but there have been very close matches, the man, diba? at the very least. Uh, but again, who will get over the hump and deal this team, uh, naman, another tama. loss? Another loss, diba? We've seen Alarcon really step up with a couple of game winners this offseason. Uh, JD Kagulangan has been spectacular also in the clutch. Uh, when you talk about Lasal, you're talking about Kevin Chambao and Polycarpio having that one-two punch. Uh, so yeah, uh, again, we, we always talk about parity. Uh, I think all three of us agree that parity is something that we want when it comes to the UAAP. When teams are more, uh, ba- when teams are more balanced, it's Needs more excitement. It needs more, more uh, fuss. Oh, it needs more. Uh, more people are happy when it comes to talking about the UAAP. Uh, it's something we look forward to, and uh, an upset would be something that I would be looking forward to also. Just to to to, to also show that there are teams capable of of beating them. Because that's some that goes a long way. Right? They can beat them in the off season. 
then maybe there's a glimmer of hope when it comes to the UAAP that that confidence could go a long way. Cap. Yeah. Uh, actually, talk about the excitement. Last season was pretty exciting because there was a three-team race for number one. Remember, it came down to the last game, to the last games of NU, UP, and LaSalle to figure out who, who was number one, who was number two, who would be getting the, the twice to be the advantage. That's pretty exciting. And it was also a th- three-team race and eventually came a two-team race for that number four slot between Ateneo Adamson and, and UE was there for a while until they finally lost their, their last two games. So, yeah, again, ex- ex- excitement is always there when the teams are competing against each other. When teams... When there's no clear uh, uh, team that's dominating the competition, I think that, that that's what we all want. Although, yun nga, I, I was going to tell you, Sam, yung, before Mawin said it, teams are, UAP teams have been competing with LaSalle and UP. It's just that they haven't finished games against LaSalle and UP. I, I, I don't yeah, want to recall yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the game against... Over the hump. Yep. Diba? Uh, the game against Lasal for 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 Adamson, they were in this game until five minutes left in the fourth quarter, when Lasal ev- ev- eventually took o- took over the game and eventually won the game. But you can see that teams, uh, despite the lack of uh, you know uh, top tier talent co- compared to the likes of UP and Lasal, they're competing. Uh, Adamson is well coached. UE is well coached. FEU has a ton of young talent, not really proven talent. Uh, so you see a ton of teams that uh, can potentially compete. They just have to finish them off. So you said, and get itamasimaw, you get over that hump in the fourth quarter, in the third quarter, when Lasal and uh, UP really ramp things up. And and I think you that's a sign din naman of a good team, diba? How can you level up your play within the game, diba? Uh, usually, championship teams have really good third and fourth quarters because they know how to step up their level of play. And we've seen that from LaSalle and UP this offseason. Uh, can, you can I name the next um, storyline yeah. that I'm a Sige. bit interested in? So let's do, yeah, let's do rapid fire. Let's do a rapid fire of other storylines that we find interesting. Let's start with you, Gab. Okay, mine is connected to what you actually said, Sam. Uh, who, who can compete with UP and Lasal? And my storyline that I'm looking at, it's Modi Asana versus Omar John. Because we've seen them alternate games all Yun. the time. Oh, uh, yes. It's that we've been discussing this for weeks now. And it's just, listen, we haven't talked about NU a ton on the past few weeks. Simply because, you know, it's the same old thing. It's the same, same lineup. But the one thing that's really interesting about ANU is that battle for the FSA slot. So I think a few weeks ago, akala natin mawi mumuang si Omar Jan na. Siya na yung first Omar game Jan, sa Omar Phil Jan, Oil. Siya yung una nagdaro sa Phil Oil eh. Tama ka, Gab. Siya yung una oh, nagdaro sa Phil Oil. Oh. So, and, natin, and medyo na. maganda yung laro games niya nun eh, di ba? Parang nag, almost best oh. player ba siya nung isang De, game? Anyway. He, 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 he played Pero, well sa Pinoy Liga, pero, Sam. The best player, yeah, yeah, yeah. Best player, yeah. Best and player, then, correct. First yeah. game in Phil Oil got two points, two rebounds, and fouled out against Precious Momoway where he was needed. And then, <laughs> soon right after, then it became Mo Diasana, and all three of us in the chat were like, "What? Akala ko si Omar Jana. Bakit bigla si Mo Diasana na yun yung yung nilalaro nila?" And Mo Diasana balled out 17 points, 14 rebounds, and 6 blocks against the USD Growling Tigers. Uh, dominating uh, just the activity, the love threat, the connection with, with Reinhardo Mamo and Tebol Garcia. And if, for, for me, uh, if they name Mo Diasana as their official FSA for season 87, I do think their ceiling is higher. I, I, just, I just think na he's. He, he brings a whole new dimension, both on offense and on defense, compared to Omar John. Sorry to Omar. I I, I, I know he, he listens a lot to this podcast. And I, I don't want to pour on the guy, but uh, it doesn't look good, man. I mean, <laughs> Mo Diasana has played, I think, their last three games already as their FSA. So, um, 
yeah, so that's it for me. It's a very interesting positional yeah. battle. I mean, there, there could only be one FSA. For there can only be one. <laughs> that's 87. Thing. So far, I'm giving the... I, yung, I'm giving the medal for now to Modi Sana because he's played better. That's, yeah. that's simply it. Maui, Sam. Yeah, tsaka I think, ano eh, di ba? Enyo has had a struggle to to replicate success, in, especially late late in the season, di ba? They've always started out pretty well. And props to over John. I think that's also because of the stability na during the start of the season. The problem is when it comes to those crucial games, when it comes to that end of the season, Seems like there's something missing with Omar John. Uh, it's been the case for the past two seasons. Uh, maybe changing things up can can bring another breath. Can breath can can bring them another uh, dimension this coming season. Uh, I think what we've seen with De Sana so far this season, this off season, and from the last is that he's really capable also to be to to be to, to be a competent FSA. And maybe switching things up can can bring something different for NU this coming season. So yeah, I, I would have to say this is a storyline worth uh, look, looking worth uh, following throughout the whole off season. Uh, kami, we've been saying this since the start of the Pinoy Liga, maybe a month or so before. Sam. Yeah, and I think Maui, you mentioned it again. I'm always referring to the previous episodes of power rankings, but may pros and cons naman, diba? Obviously, like Omar John is a bit a bit bigger than Diasana, and he's the more experienced or veteran one over Diasana. But Diasana has the potential. He has the motor. He's more athletic or agile. So hopefully, we get to see more from Omar John because so far, at least as of right now, we're we're seeing a lot of Diasana, and he's been performing really well but if Omar John wants that that FSA slot for season 87 hopefully he gets to step up and has the opportunity to play the next few games for um uh NU okay moving on to the next one Maui yeah uh you next you one of the things that I'm looking forward to also is what will happen to UE now that uh Rimogat is out of the picture the uh I think uh, UE has been the surprise team the past few seasons. They've been that kind of team, but but it's both a positive and a negative. A positive because they always surprise us and they always outperform. A negative because there's no sense of stability when you talk about the UE Red Warriors. Uh, it's fortunate that Momo Way has decided to stay in UE. I think all of those off-season rumors have been squashed. Momo Way is indeed staying in UE. Uh, that they have to build on that, that stability. Uh, Momoe will probably be their FSA for the next probably three more years after this or four years. But the question is, who will be the other guys? Diba? We've seen players like Molintapang. We've seen players like Cruz Dumont. We've seen players like Abante. Uh, I think that that's something that they have to work on. Who will be the next uh, next part of those crew who will be consistent come season 87? Because you can't win with one guy. In the UAAP, you can't win despite having Momo we, uh bring up those 2020 numbers. But they have to have other guys step up. They have to hit their three pointers. Now we have to get some of some some consistent guys, maybe one or two of them that could go a long way. So that UE rotation with something to be to to look forward to. Also, uh, I think that Coach Jack is the perfect coach to to have a team that will outperform. I think that's been proven throughout history and. Now it's a question of uh, who will who, who from whom of those guys will will, will answer the question of host Jack. Uh, I actually think that's a pretty good question, Maui. Because it uh, you see from game to game na medyo iba ibang tao yung yung suma sidekick kay Precious Mama Way, de ba? There's sometimes it's Cruz Dumont. Sometimes it's Rainier Maga. Sometimes si uh, Moling Tapang yung has a good game. It, but uh, yung ay ang yung sobrang variable and you can see na they struggle a lot when it's just Momo Way contributing because nga, um, he he misses a ton of free throws. <laughs> I just have to say it. Uh, he gets a ton of inside points and sometimes he forces things. Yung kanyang habit from the from his first season, season 86. Sometimes he forces the action. Instead of letting the game come to him, 
get the ball in the post, just operate from inside the paint. Sometimes, you see it in yung Pinoy Liga. Dinadala niya yung bola, he doesn't pass to his point guard, so his guards to bring up the ball. Results in a lot of turnovers. And he still misses a ton of free throws. So, uh, I do hope na we do get that one or two consistent guys who can contribute to 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 UE. And John Abate is also one of these guys na from game to game, hindi mo alam kung ano mga kuha mo sa kanya eh. Uh, yeah. Same thing with with yung with sina Cruz Dumont, uh, Spandonis, uh, all of these guys just I so 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 very inconsistent. Eh. Uh, you you juxtapose that to how they were last season and and even the season before, diba? You had a core group. You know, you had Luis Villegas, you had si Payawa, who was always contributing. Si Paranada last season, you had si Remoga, si Gerald Wilson. Now you don't know it. Eh. You don't really know where the offense is coming from aside from precious precious mom away. So the interesting to see. Sami. Yeah, you mentioned it, Gab. I think one of the things that we need to look out for is precious mom away's consistency on the free throw line. Because we know he's going to play. And I wouldn't be surprised if Momo Way ends up playing the entire game, every game. Because <laughs> that's how much they need Momo Way right now. And we've seen it. Being successful, we've seen him play an entire game and they beat NU. So, nakita na natin yung road to success nila, but it's not gonna be easy because Momo has to play the entire game and he has to shoot well or at least be decent on the free throw line. So, something to look out for. But, um, yung maganda sa UE, alam mo, despite always losing a number of key players, they always have that potential to surprise. Coach Jack can really. Um, make do with what he has and maximize his roster. So, so far in the preseason, I'm pleasantly surprised, I would say, despite losing a lot, a ton of players and Ray Remoga, potential MVP candidate, they have competed and they have battled. Um, sige, next question. I think something that has been talked about consistently the past few weeks or the entire preseason, can LaSalle find a solution at point guard? Or can, who will fill in the point guard slot in La Salle. So I the way I asked it is like who can fill in? Because you do have a lot of players that can fill in. Obviously, um David is the top of mind guy. Uh against UP Lang, he didn't perform that well. So you know you made you disappointing. But we like David and he's the next man up talaga to fill in that starting point guard spot. But we've talked about it. KQ can play a lot of point guard um, minutes. He can be the playmaker. We, we've we seen uh, Pauly play really well and playmake a lot for the team. But what will they end up deciding to do? What will Coach Topex Ro- Robinson end up deciding to do? Is it one of those three guys that I mentioned? Or is it one of the guys that the other commenters have mentioned? I think one of the top of mind guys is Rubico. Um, we've seen him play sparingly, but I don't know, baka tinatago lang siya ni Coach Topex. Or, could it be someone from the outside? Maybe a one-and-done player from abroad? Um, we don't know. But that's definitely one of the biggest question marks for La Salle this coming UAAP Season 87 when they defend their title. Gab? I do have some minor storylines that, that I think is worth monitoring. One, I want to see the Gilas guys play. Finally, Jacob Bala, we haven't seen him play. Uh, Zayn Mahmood, we haven't seen him play. Alex Kono, yeah, yeah, yeah. where he ends up, I want to see them play. If he ends up in the so UAP, yeah. If he ends up in the UAP, I, 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 I want to see him play. So, Jaden Jones, from who committed to FEU, I haven't seen him play. So, I do want to see the Gilas guys play. So, those new recruits for for their team. So I so I do want to see them play. So that's a minor storyline for me right before we end this. Uh, I don't know your guys thought about it, but the other um, my uh, storyline that I find interesting coming into the UAAP season, will there be rule changes in the UAAP? No? Uh, the uh, oh, Rebo Sagisa okay. ha- yung has proven that he's willing to shake things up, not be so traditional with how things go about in the UAAP. I don't want to see some rule changes, particularly from the things that we, we've we been uh, griping about since for the past couple of years already. One, 
please take out TV timeouts. I do hope there's a rule change that comes. Maybe, maybe, just please, just disturbs the flow of the game. Just get rid of that TV will not timeouts. Happen. <laughs> ah, as much Listen. as it's a low chance to Listen, happen. Alam. Listen, please. Oh. Oh, yun. And then, lessen the amount of reviews. I just don't like it when the last two minutes of every game takes 34 to 40 minutes to finish. I don't like it when every finals game is three hours long. Can yeah, we get yeah, something yeah, yeah. new? Can, we get, can, can, can rule changes happen in the UAAP? Come on. Um, yun lang. I mean... We've been asking for this uh, for the longest time, and I hope we get an answer. And uh, sorry, another minor uh, storyline that I'm uh, looking for: Will Filipinas live increase their prices for se- before season eighty-seven? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, subscribe na kayo bago pa mag-start yung season eighty-seven. Uh, pro tip lang. Last year, oh. kasi they increased prices before the season, de ba? They rewarded oh, people for the subscribe. Season. They rewarded people really? to subscribe before the season. So, you can subscribe to watch Gila's games also, diba? It's a good time to to hedge. But, but I think the most important is, will they follow every other league in this country and stream the game for free? <laughs> Yun. <laughs> just, never just gonna want, happen. Diba? As much as Filipinas Live is improving, I do want games to be streamed for free at least. Or at least, man yeah. select games. You know, get get new fans into the league. So those are three minor storylines. I don't know what your reactions are to them. Magandang point yun, Gab, no? And marami tayong friends who are casual fans that want to watch once in a while pero not enough to um, subscribe to Pinoy Liga or maybe subscribe to cable cable TV, diba? So paano naman yung mga casual fans? Man Pilipinas man? Live, not, not Pinoy Liga. Ah, sorry. Sorry. Pinipinas live, Pinipinas live. Kaya, kaya malakas yung colorum, di ba, na Gcash. Gcash sa Facebook. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, even si Carl, Carl Tamayo, Tamayo, by the way. Mala, Carl, Carl Tamayo, Tamayo was watching just through from, that. from Japan. Kasi it's so hard to subscribe also. Eh, di ba? Imagine all the IFWs who want to watch the, the UAAP. Uh, I think it's it's warranted to look at yung ease of watching, di ba, the games. That's something that they have to improve on if they want to continue to to improve yung viewership ng, ng games natin. Uh, whether they charge or not, it's it's about ease of of getting to watch these games, di ba? Uh, and, and Pinoy League has done a better job th- than before. Uh, I do hope that we get... I Filipinas get, Live, not Pinoy Liga. Uh, we're getting confused. We're getting confused. Yeah, Pinipinas Live. Sorry, and dami, Pilipinas Pilipinas Live. Ang dami kasi nating Pinoy Liga coverage. Eh. We've been watching Ay, a lot of Pinoy Liga. So we've, been watching, we've been watching a ton of Pinoy Liga. Yeah, but Pilipinas Live, uh, I do hope that much like the NCA, we get Facebook, we get uh, YouTube. It's, it's really just, YouTube. It just improves the ease of, of getting to watch these games. Uh, maybe they can find other ways to make money than, than through the app. Uh or find another service that they offer better when you subscribe to the app to entice people. Uh, but pre, pre, free TV is still the easiest way, and YouTube is there, Facebook is there. So yeah, uh, with regard to the rule changes, that would probably be another episode for us. <laughs> we will probably have another debate uh, when it comes to things that we want to see differently come the U- come UAP 87. But nevertheless, we are very happy that, uh, especially with uh, Commissioner Sagisag, uh, I think it's very important that we have a dynamic and uh, a non-traditional commissioner who is willing to change and shake things up. That's something that I have to say. Okay, that's it for today's episode. Just a rapid fire of storylines that we need to watch out for. Sorry, before we end... Maybe shout out hashtag KQ Watch for season eighty eight. I'm ko season eighty seven. Medyo luck na siya, but he recruited a lot of his friends for season eighty eight. So, um, as early as now, KQ Watch season eighty eight. Maybe we should start doing that. So that's it for today's episode. Um, hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you again next week. Bye bye.